I really don't want to empty my black tank anymore. There must be a better way, right? Everybody, it's Robin with Creativity RV and thank you for checking out my video on my new composting toilet. Um, I love my composting toilet. I've had it for a few months now but I wanted to make sure that I could really tell you guys how it works uh, before I did this video. So really quick in this video I'm gonna teach you how I installed it with four great hacks. I'm gonna tell you why I chose to get one and how it's working for me so far. So I'm gonna start with the beginning which is why I decided to get one. So like all of you, um, I have an RV black tank and a gray tank, and I had a regular RV toilet. But my RV is a 25-foot um, leisure travel van with a 30-gallon water tank. And I was using a lot of my water to flush my toilet. I did some research on this, and I found out that the average RV toilet uses about four pints or half a gallon of water for every flush. And I can take a good RV shower in like five or six gallons. So for every 10 flushes, I was losing out on a shower. And I boondock almost all the time. So I wanted to conserve the water. The other thing is I just got sick of always being on the hunt for a dump station and a water station. And even if, you know, I was only at places for five days. I didn't want to have to go search for a place or go out of my way or use my gas to go and, and find a place that was off my route. So those were the two reasons that I decided to get a composting toilet, but I thought that it was complicated and that I had to take some steps that I found out I don't have to, and that's part of the hacks I'm going to teach you. Uh, let me get into how a composting toilet works. I am actually surprised at how many people don't know how it works or are not familiar with the concept of the composting toilet. So composting toilets actually started um, in the marine world because they were used on boats because they don't have a, a sewer dump, right? Or a sewer line. So they had to figure something out. And then it became big in the tiny house world. And it's also pretty big in the RV world. And um, to me, it's a lot better than having to take out the stinky slinky and go to a dump station every couple of weeks where, you know, there are mishaps and it smells. I've gotten stuff on my shoe. I'm sure you have too. Um, so the compost toilet takes all of that away. Now, here are some misconceptions that I find that some people have about it. A composting toilet is not a bucket filled with saw sawdust that you pee and poop in that smells and you have to go and dump in, you know, the dead of night in some dumpster. It's not a cassette toilet, um, a, a luggable loo. It's not an outhouse and it is not an RV toilet. An RV toilet, unlike a household toilet, doesn't fill with water. You have to, you know, put a little bit of water into it if you want to while you're doing your, your beeswax. Um, but what it essentially does is it rinses out the toilet bowl, and that's what's using your fresh water. And frankly, it doesn't always work great, and it can stain, and it can smell, and I found that that was all a real hassle. The composting toilet takes all of that hassle away. There is no more dumping of your tanks. Like I said in my promo, I didn't want to empty a black tank anymore, and I don't. Um, and I find it a lot cleaner, frankly, than an RV toilet. Um, what it is, and here's a picture of mine up here. This is a Nature's Head composting toilet. I'll put the link for this below. Um, what it does is it separates your liquids from your solids. Now, let's get into it, people. Um, I found out that the pee mixing with the poo is what actually makes your stuff smell. When you separate out the pee from the poo, and I'll show you how it does that, it doesn't smell. So when you look at the picture here, you're going to see that like opaque looking white kind of jug in the front. That's where the pee goes. And when you look at the inside of the toilet bowl itself, you can see those two little holes in the front that the pee actually goes down into and it traps your pee separate from the solids. Now this is the only part of maintenance that you have to do on an ongoing basis in the composting toilet. You have to take that jug out and dump it every two or three days. Now, look, I dump mine outside. 
um, if it's not too full. Because, you know, guys pee outside and animals pee outside, so I think I should get to put my pee outside. Um, but with that being said, if, if it gets really full, I don't want it to be like ka-chunk, 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 you know, dumping out into a natural area. So I um, then, you know, when I'm filling up with water, I'll dump it into a sewer line or I'll take it into a bathroom and dump it in the toilet and flush it, something like that. Um, but here is the magical part. The solids go in this back container. This is why the base of a composting toilet is bigger than a regular RV toilet or a home toilet, because that big square base in the back is filled with composting material, just like composting material that you put in your garden. So what happens is you poop into that back container with, oh, the back container, <laughs> I made a joke. Anyway, um, so you poop back there with this prepared composting material, and I'm going to walk you through that whole thing, and your poop breaks down, and it does not smell. I mean, it might smell like soil, um, but it certainly doesn't smell like poop, and it doesn't smell, frankly, as bad as an RV toilet can smell, uh, at least in my experience. So um, that's how you do it, and that's how it works. It doesn't use any water, it doesn't use any electricity, and you only have to dump the solids like... They say every 90 goes. This one, let's get into the installation. So, the first thing when you're going to install your composting toilet is that you want to get everything prepared in advance. The first thing you want to do is you want to clean out your black tank. Now, here's hack number one. My friend Tiki suggested that we go to an RV park to do this, and I had never been to an RV park. I mean, I've been to like state parks where I had a hookup, but I've never been to an RV park park, like an RV resort. But she suggested it because it has a water and sewage line right there next to your side, unlimited, nobody's waiting in line behind you. And it was 20 bucks to stay at the RV park we did with Passport America. Um, and I recommend it. So I was able to, because of that, really clean out my black tank. I also added some bleach in, added some more water. I drove around so it sloshed around in there. I emptied it again. And so that is prep number one and hack number one. The next thing you want to do is you want to prepare the composting toilet for install. Now, when you look in this picture up here, you're going to see the composting toilet is empty. And in the back, there's a big square place where the composting material goes. And you're going to see that um, metal crank looking thing. And this is what turns the compost and the poo together so that it breaks down. And what you want to do is you want to properly prepare composting material to go into that back container. You have a couple of options here. You can use sphagnum peat moss. It cannot be regular peat moss or it will not break down properly. Um, or coconut core. Now, both of these weren't going to be great solutions for me because they came in these giant, like 40, 80 pound blocks that you could barely carry. And I certainly had nowhere to store them. And so I searched and searched and searched. And I found a little tiny brick of coconut core about this big. It comes in um, a container of 12, I believe. And I will put the link for that below. That is hack number two. The smaller container of composting material that you use, the easier it's going to be to store for future use and break down because breaking it down is a process. So here's what you want to do. You want to get a little bucket like this red one that you see up here. And um, this it's, it's, a, it's a methodical process and you don't want to overdo it. So let me explain. You want to put your big brick or, you know, two or three of the small bricks into a bucket like this and you want to have a couple of inches of water in the bottom of the bucket. Put the dry brick in there and then walk away. Do some of your other stuff. Um, what's going to happen there is that the water is going to seep up into the block. And this is going to save you a ton of work. So I guess this is also a hack. Um, the trick to a good compost material, according to Nature's Head, is that you want the compost, when you put it in, to be used to be the consistency of like wet coffee grounds. Maybe wet coffee grounds that have been sitting for like 10 minutes. Um, so you'll see my hands in a shot up here. This is what you're looking for. And you want to break it down really, really fine. Well, those blocks are so thick that this is not easy to do. So if you sit it in the water and let the water soak up into the block, it makes it a lot easier. Then you just want to hold the top of the block and you want to stab at it with a screwdriver or something to help break it down into big pieces. And then get in there with your hands. It's actually fun and break it down into little tiny, tiny pieces. You do not want it to be wet, so don't go crazy adding water. 
after you know it soaks up and you start to break it down, add a couple of tablespoons at a time because if you make it too wet, it will not compost properly and you're gonna wreck the whole batch. So a little bit at a time. So you're gonna prep that and have that ready to go. Now, um, install number three. This is where you are going to remove your existing RV toilet. And let me tell you, I was scared to do this by myself. Um, I had Tiki behind me supervising me, uh, but she wasn't gonna help me. I had to do it by myself. And let me tell you, I'm a writer. I am not um, a plumber. And I'm a little bit handy, but like I didn't even know what the tools were called that I needed to do this. So if I can do it, you can certainly do it. And um, you're gonna wanna have a bunch of stuff ready to go when you um, start taking the toilet off. So let me tell you what things you wanna prep. You wanna have um, a few sandwich bags, rubber bands. You wanna have a big trash bag and you wanna have a whole bunch of those grocery store plastic bags. Now, I know that's a, a lot of plastic bags, but they're all for a reason and I'll explain it in a second. You also wanna have your toolbox and you're gonna to wanna to have um, a cap that should go into the hole down into your black tank that you see after you remove the toilet. Now, I tell you, I got the cap, which I'll put the link for below, but it didn't work for me. Um, and so that was another hack we figured out while I was doing this. But let's get to how to remove the toilet and then I'll get there. So, of course, you have cleaned out your black tank your composting toilet is ready to go. Now what you wanna do is you wanna reach around behind the toilet and you wanna turn that little silver lever that turns off the water so that when you take the toilet off, you don't get covered in water. I turned it off really tight and then I also put my foot down on the lever of the toilet to make sure that no water was coming out. Then you wanna reach around behind and there's usually a blue line you'll see here in my picture that went to the back of my toilet and you just wanna get some pliers and unscrew it. It was easy for me to do that and just let it hang out. Just let it hang there, okay? Then, if you look around the back of your toilet, you're gonna see these two white caps. You know, the ones that you hate to clean when you're in your house and you're like, why are these even freaking here? Um, they get so dirty and you have to clean around them. Well, those cover the bolts that attach your toilet to the ground. So you just pinch those little caps and you take them off and you set them to the side and then you're gonna see the bolts that attach your RV toilet to the ground. Um, or to the floor. So you're gonna wanna remove those, and it was easy. And then you're gonna wanna start jiggling the toilet and remove the, the bolts all the way and get ready because this part goes really fast. You want to lift up the toilet because it's disconnected now from everything, and you wanna quick put it into the black or white trash bag. Um, the reason for this is there could be some schmutz on it, that's a technical term. Um, or some water dripping from it and you just wanna, you know, you don't wanna set it to the side and then go, oh crap, um, I just made a mess. So you put it there. Then, super, super fast, you wanna take that giant bunch of trash bags from the grocery store and you wanna shove them down into the sewer hole. Now, when I heard about this, I thought, well, what is that gonna do? And Tiki told me that the smell from your black tank is gonna knock you on your butt. And I didn't believe it. I thought I cleaned it out really well, but I'm telling you, when we took that toilet off, I thought that my eyebrows had been burned off. So quick, you shove these plastic bags. You do it because, you know, you put them in there, they're easy, and they expand. And I have to tell you, it still smelled, but it wasn't bad anymore. And they're handy, and they were right there, and they're there blocking the smell while you get your cap ready to put on. Now you're gonna see a little black ring is left there um, that, you know, kind of sealed your RV toilet on. And technically you're supposed to take that off and then put a cap into the hole. Well, my cap didn't work. I got the right diameter cap, which I think was three and a half inches across, and you'll see a picture of it here. And I'll have a link down below, so hopefully it'll work for you, but have backups just in case. But the cap that I got was straight up and down on the side, but the line or the hole that it needed to go into was tapered. So I guess on the newer RVs, it's tapered and I didn't know that. So I ordered the wrong thing and we went to, you know, put it in the hole and it didn't work. So we had to improvise. So here's what we did and it worked. And this is another hack for you. Um, Tiki, who you might have seen from her video about how what an organizational genius she is, has every screw and every piece of glue and every kind of material you can imagine. Well, she had this industrial tape. And 
when we first tried it, I thought it wasn't going to work. She didn't know if it was going to work. People, it worked. It was great. I ordered this tape because it was so great and so strong um, that I think if I ripped a hole in the side of my RV, this tape seriously would fix it. It's about this thick. And you'll see in this picture here, here's what we did. We left the ring on and then we cut the tape and put the tape on it and the tape wasn't curling. It stuck great and the smell was gone. There is no smell from my black tank in my RV. That tape worked like a dream. So we taped up the hole instead of putting a cap in it. No problem. But that created another problem, which is the composting toilet didn't have a flat base then to sit on. So we were on the hunt for some pieces of wood to like, you know, just build a little base or some kind of material that we could do that. And I was walking around um, trying to find some wood and I remembered that my neighbor, Adam, thank you, Adam, if you're watching so much, you were such a dream. Um, I went up and uh, knocked on his door and he was super friendly about it. He was a construction guy and he had um, a garage and um, had shown us his, his build out that he had done. And so I thought he might have some wood left over. Um, and he asked what I needed it for. And I told him and he said, oh no, let's just jump in my truck and we'll go down to Ace Hardware. We were in um, Ehrenberg, so we just popped over to Blythe. And um, we got like a $5 sheet of hardwood and um, a little saw. So you'll see here, this, this is what we ended up building for the base of my toilet. And honestly, I would not do it any other way. I love it. It gave me another inch of height. I'm kind of short, so that was good. Um, and we were able to, instead of connecting the composting toilet to the floor, which would have put holes in my floor, we connected the composting toilet to this wood and then connected the wood to the floor of the RV underneath the footprint of the existing or the old toilet. So if I resell it, um, it's gonna look great. And by the way, back to this hack. So we got this piece of wood, we cut it to be a good base for underneath the toilet. Then we cut a line down the back of the wood and then a hole that was the size of the plug we needed to plug. And so the toilet sat right on top of that and there was no more rocking and it gave me a really nice stable um, base. Here is hack number four. And listen, I know that I'm going to get comments on this and there are going to be purists that think that you shouldn't do this and there are going to be people that said, oh crap, um, I didn't know I didn't have to do that. So the last step normally when you install a composting toilet is that you attach a tube to the side of the composting toilet that pulls air out of that back composting bin and then the tube has to be um, strung through like a hole in your RV out by the exhaust and then th they have to there's a little fan that goes also there that you have to hook up to your electrical that is supposed to fan out the smell from the composting portion out the back of your RV. Well this is the part that I found so daunting that I um, didn't want to deal with it. I'm going to do some videos later on some how to deal with your RV warranty and get paid for being in the shop hacks um, because I did that, but I had some electrical problems and frankly, I did not want to deal with it. Well, when Tiki told me that she did not hook up this little fan to an electrical source and have it blown out, I thought for sure that couldn't work, that it was going to smell. Well, she had me stick my head down in her composting toilet and it, it smells like soil everybody. And you only smell that when that trap door is open. When it's shut, you don't smell anything at all. But just to be sure, I called Nature's Head and I said, look, do you have to install that fan? And they said, look, th th what it's really for, the fan keeps your composting material the right wetness, dryness level. So as you're adding material into the back of your composting bin, it might get wetter. And like I said, it has to be the consistency of like coffee grounds. So um, the fan really is meant to keep it the right dryness level. But because I spend most of my time, as most of the RVers do, in the West and Southwest, and, and we're not in a moist area, that is not a problem. It wasn't a problem for Tiki. It hasn't been a problem for me. And the rep that I talked to at Nature's Head thought it was totally fine too. He did say to me to keep an eye on the wet dryness level of my compost. And if it seemed to be getting too wet um, to add some more drier composting material, I haven't done that. But what I have done is if I thought it was, the, it was getting a little out of whack, I open up the trap door and I turn on my fantastic fan and it sucks air up out of it. And if I do that for an hour, I come back and it's drier. So that is what worked for me. So hack number four, 
you don't have to install the little fan and the tube to install a composting toilet. You can just seal up um, everything from your old toilet and just attach the composting toilet as if it were a bucket onto the ground and not worry about it. Now look, if this hack stops working for me, I'm gonna let you guys know right away. Um, it's been months and it's been great and it doesn't smell and I'm having no problems and I love it. And I'll tell you this, I get about two or three more showers than I did when I had the toilet stealing my water. Thanks for watching everybody. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe and tell all your friends about it. I appreciate you watching. This is Robin with Creativity RV. Safe travels, be free everybody, and have a great day.